What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be looking at the new Lian Lee Uni Fan TL LCD 140 fans. These are the ones with the little LCD screen. They make these in both reverse blade and normal blade. What does that mean? This is a normal blade and this is the reverse blade. To put it simply, usually your fan is going to blow air through this way. So the side that has the frame is the side that air comes through. And if you use it as an intake fan, it's going to look ugly because this is the side that you're going to see inside your case. With the reverse style blades, you are now going to be able to see it on the nice side and it will still be an intake fan. Now they also make these in 120 millimeters, both normal blade and reverse blade as well. And they also make them without the LCD if you don't care about the LCDs. The first thing I'll say straight off the bat is these are very expensive. They are not cheap at all. And they don't make a three pack for the 140s. I had to buy three separate fans. I'm not sponsored by Lee and Lee because I am going to use them in my build. I will say that it definitely isn't for the faint of heart. It was very expensive. I spent $300 just getting three fans and a controller. I believe that they should just sell a three pack with a controller because if you're already charging almost $90 per fan, they should just give you the controller for free. Now let's uh, open this up and let's have a look. So if you decide to get a set of these fans for yourself, you will know exactly how to connect it. First, let's open all of these up. And this is the one I already had open. As you can see, the look is very similar to the SL fan. Just look at the size difference for the 120 and the 140. This should move a lot of air. With the reverse style fan, you notice how the fan blades are different. See how these curve in and these curve out. So these are reverse and these are normal. Each 140 fan does come with its own cable. With the older fans, they came with a cable that allowed you to adapt it to a 5 volt 3 pin. But in this case, you need a controller in order to control these. You have the LCD screen now. Without the controller hub, you're not gonna be able to control the LCD screen. All right, so here is the SATA power cable, and this is the controller itself. They always give you a little magnet or some sort of adhesive. This is a magnet. It will stick onto here and then you can um, adhere it to the case. It will take four of these. They also give you screws. Nicely packaged with foam back and front. Even foam on the top as well. So these are reverse blades. You can see here that they've also put a protective sticker on here so it doesn't scratch in transit. So that's great as well. Let's have a look at how they interconnect. You line up the gold pins with the gold plate. You have the rectangular side and the square side. You put it in on the rectangular side like so and you just slide it like so. That's how that goes in together. Do the same to the next. Just line it up. Basically this rectangle here sits inside the bigger part of the tab here and you line it up like so and then you slide it across and that's it. The other cool thing with this is if you're not using anything on this side, watch what you can do. You turn it counterclockwise and you can pull this out so it's not in the way. Say you wanted to have this flush up against something, you could easily remove these and you could have it flush up against, say, your case or another fan. Look at that. How cool is that? No longer will you have it sticking out. That's a good little design there as well. This is the way it's going to look. This is how you connect it. So you have the side that plugs into your hub and then you've got this side which connects to your fan. Now you only need one of these. They daisy chain and interconnect and share power just like any other uni fan. You can see that you've got a, a bigger tab on this side and a smaller one on the bottom. So when you line this up, remember that you have to line it up with flat gold plates to pins. You just sit it on top like so and you slide it down and that's it. It's connected now and also you notice how you've got two of these slots that's because if for some reason you needed to route these cables this way you can 
use the slot on this side to hide the cables a little bit better. That's a really cool design as well because it allows you to route your cable either way depending on which side is closer to your hole where the cable runs through. They've also designed one with just a SATA. However, in testing, I did not need to use this cable whatsoever. All right, so now that we have it connected to the fan, so just for the sake of this video, I've just daisy chain two together. Straight off the fan, it goes into your hub like so. And that simply connects like that. You have two main connections that come off your hub. You have your six pin PCIe and your nine pin USB. If all your cables are already used up from the GPU, you may not get enough power to this, but in that case, you could always use something like Molex to six pin because all you're really doing is supplying power to this. The main connector that controls the fans is going to be this nine pin USB. You also have two more connections that come off this, just like any Lee and Lee hub. You've got your five volt three pin, so you can sync it to your motherboard and you've got your PWM, which will allow you to control the speed of the fan. However, even without these, you're able to control the speed of the fan because your USB connection here is going to allow you to use the software to control the fan speed. I'm going to connect it without these. We're only going to connect the 9 pin and the PCIe 6 pin. Just like when you connect any 9 pin USB 2.0, there's always a pin missing, as you can see here. So make sure you line that up and then plug it in. Now, if for some reason you've run out of nine pins, because in most cases, your nine pins are going to be taken up by your AIO, or say you have two nine pins for your case, or one goes to your case and one goes to your AIO, then you're going to have an issue connecting this Lian Li hub. That's easily solved by simply using a nine pin splitter. NZXT make one, but you can also buy cheap alternatives to that. The other thing to remember is not to plug too many into one. Make sure you don't plug it all in just one nine pin. In that case, you would overpower it and most likely probably short out because you are overpowering how much voltage or how much power the nine pin header can output. So that's also something to keep in mind as well. All I've done here is I've extended the six pin of my GPU cable. This plugs into the back. Now, it is a shame that this is very short as well. So all I've done here is I've extended it off the back of my GPU cable. I've plugged it in. Now let's turn it on. Let's download the software. You search for L3 Connect, which is a Lee Anli software. You click on here. It will take you to the Lee Anli website. You wanna to go to software and go to L3 Connect. Then you scroll down and here you're going to see L3 Connect. Now you wanna make sure you get the current version, which is version 2.08. You can see the date here, 25th of the 1st, 2024. So you download this and then it will start to download. All right, so if for any reason it fails to download, click on this again and it will take you to another page. You might have to sign in using your Google account because they've used a Google Drive in order to upload it. Click download, download anyway. Now I've already downloaded it, so I'm not gonna download it again. But from here you click save as and it will download. Once it finishes downloading, you will see it here. You go to open file location and what you want to do here is extract all click extract here and then it will open up a new folder which all the files have been extracted to double click it here double click here and follow the prompts and it will install it for you it will make a desktop shortcut it will make a start menu shortcut and you will have the l3 connect software click next and it's going to do its thing now and after it's done you're going to see it on your desktop and just watch for it here because you're going to see it come up. Close this, double click on the L3 Connect software and click yes. Now the software will open. As you can see, the L3 Connect is a very good software. You, you can see system specs. You can monitor all different types of temperatures and speeds, clock speeds and all that. So it's a very good software. Now go to TL Utility. Click Fan Profile here. You control your speed. I'm just going to remove these nipples so that it can stand straight. Remember, it's just a counterclockwise. Now you can sit it up. You can change fan speed. You don't have to go into BIOS, anything like that. It's all controllable via the Lian Li software. Full speed, listen for it. That's how powerful it is, look at that. It does move a lot of air, so these fans are great for that reason. In utility, here are your lighting effects. You have all different types of lighting effects and you're able to control one side at a time. So say I only wanted to do one side, I could choose that as color cycle. You always click apply after. Look at this, I can control just that side there. 
and then the bottom I can choose something like rainbow apply it and you got rainbow on this side and you got color cycle on that side or you can simply just choose both sides and go rainbow vomit because why not look at that don't forget that you also have the side infinity mirror look as well let's go to our lighting effects and you can choose all different types of effects for the static color apply and you can choose what colors you want on either side so say you wanted yellow on one side you click it here and then you click apply now you have yellow on that side now you go run away apply and that's what runaway looks like now we'll go color cycle apply and you can choose what colors you want there as well as the speed as well so we drag the speed down click apply and now it's going to go a lot slower you can also control the brightness and the direction in which you want it to run now we're going the opposite way we'll just go through all of these quickly so you guys have an idea of what it looks like this is render from render we've got that's tail chasing you can see why stack is called stack because it starts to stack the leds cover cycle and that's your wave and that's your racing that's lottery that looks pretty nice actually i mean if we did something like say purple here instead of red and applied that Wow, yeah, that does look pretty nice, actually. It looks pretty cool, guys. So we'll apply that, just so you guys can see what Intertwine looks like. And lastly, we've got Meteor Shower. And that's Meteor Shower. It actually looks really nice. Let's see what we can do with the LCD screen. So you're able to upload a picture to the LCD screen, for instance. So say I wanted to upload an image. Now you add an image, right? We'll just see what we have on our desktop. Well. Here we have a little cute creature. So we'll click on one of the fans and we'll click on the image. You should get the image uploaded immediately. One thing I wanted to point out is that if for some reason you're trying to get it to work but it isn't responding, the reason this happens, you need to plug the cable that plugs into your fan. This here must plug into any other port but port number one. So right now it's plugged into port one. Watch what happens when I plug it into port number two. So now we're in port two and we're going to redo everything, right? So we go to LCD screen, we select one of the fans and we select the picture. Look at that, already it responded immediately. You can see the picture right there. So the thing is you need to have it plugged into any other port but the first port. This is something that I discovered during troubleshooting with Leanne Lee. Lian Lee pointed this out for me and I was able to fix it quite easily. So you can kind of see it there. Um, it is a lot better once you um, get the right angle. I mean, it is very clear. There you go. So that's how clear it looks in real life. That's one option. You can choose a PNG or JPEG and apply it and you can do it to the next one. And now we're going to try a video. So let's see what we got. And there we go. Here I've got my little outro going on. It's really cool that you can put an MP4 file on repeat and it will just keep playing it. Next we've got our sensors. Here you're going to see things like GPU temp, CPU load. These are the things you can display and you have four different styles as well. So if I select the first one, which is going to be our CPU temp, as you can see right here. Now we can go to style two. And that's what it looks like. Then we can go to style three. And that's what it looks like there. Pretty cool actually. And style four. You can also change the color of the text. Uh, not just white, but say I wanted to go to green. I could do that and then click on this button here. And it changes it to green. That it is now green. There it is in red now. It will display according to what you choose the style wise and color wise as well when they first came out with this they didn't give you the option for the different colors but now they do do that so you're able to change the color scheme and that's great look at that you can even change the color to match your entire setup you can select say gpu temp for your second one and it will show you gpu temp and then you can choose a different style for one and a different style for the other. And then you can change the color. Say you've got a red theme happening, then you can choose red. The fact that it's so customizable just makes it that much more worthwhile. And lastly, we have animation. Now, there are some preset animations on the software itself. Lee and Lee have supplied a few animations. And uh, let me show you what it's like when you choose it. So 
The first one we have here is a spaceship flying through. See how cool it is? The way it links together. So you can see the spaceship flying from here to here and then from here to here. So that's pretty cool. Just say you wanted to have your fans horizontal. Well, you could have it horizontal as well because you see here we've got two fans vertical. Now we can go two fans horizontal. And then we choose a horizontal picture and look at that. The animation is now horizontal. It's like it continues on from this screen to that screen. So that's a pretty cool little feature right there. You are also able to separate these as well. So as you can see there, it's got a skeleton dancing across the, the LCD screen. Oh, we've got a fight scene. So that's pretty cool. Of course, you could always have one vertical, one horizontal, and then you could change them accordingly. If you wanted to then go from horizontal to vertical, all you have to do is click this rotating button here. So right now we've got them vertical, but the pictures are still horizontal. So if we click it here, select it, and we click it, as you can see, it's flipping it now until you get it to where you want, which is horizontal. Is it really worth the money you spend? If you're really into aesthetics and you really want that different look, you know, something so different, then maybe this is for you. But if you I don't, then think maybe this isn't worth it. So you can choose different animations for different fans. It will just keep replaying the animation. We have another one here. We have a rocket ship. So if we go to vertical, now we've got it in sync with each other so that the animation continues from one screen to the next screen. They've really come out with a lot of features with these new fans. It really comes down to your budget, what you want it for, and how much do you really care about your aesthetics. And if you really want them for these sensors, there are cheaper ways to get sensors inside your PC case or even a external monitor so that you can monitor temps and monitor your PC as you're playing games, etc. To just simply buy these for the temps, I think that's a little overkill. The amount of money you spend on just one fan. This is 140 by the way, not the 120. You could already get a little 3.5 inch monitor or even a 7 inch monitor, add it to the side of your screen or have it on the outside of your PC case and use it to monitor your temps and your other sensors. And that basically breaks it down for us. So remember that there are so many different ways to customize these Li and Li fans. It really comes down to what you want, the theme that you're using it for. That will dictate how you're going to use these fans, the color scheme you're going to use, the LEDs you're going to use, as well as what you want displayed in the LCD screen, most importantly. So I really hope you found this video helpful, guys. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That brings us to the end of the video and as always don't forget to like share comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video this is mike with mikey's vlogs signing off bye for now guys <laughs>